is Danny Ryan. I'm the co-founder and VP of business development for Three Will. Um, and I will host this, and I'm not hosting it quite well. <laughs> Uh, hopefully it'll go a little smoother from here. I've got Kirk Lamone here with me. Kirk is a principal software engineer and migrations practice lead. Thanks for joining me, Kirk. Sure. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and jump right in since uh, we want to sort of in this um, in this discussion. Uh, if you've got some questions that you'd like to ask, please ask those questions through the uh, go to webinar interface. I, I see that a lot of people have figured that out so far. Um, but we are covering primarily a, a white paper that is um, was produced by Kirk. In fact, it was so large that we're calling it an ebook. It's about 26 pages, and it covers uh, large and complex uh, sh uh, SharePoint migrations and some of the things that we've learned through the years. And so, um, with that, uh, you can download that through again through the uh, Go to Webinar interface. There's a PDF that's in there and feel free to download that. So let's jump right in. Since we've already jumped, let's jump in for the second time. How about that? Yeah. So the first thing that you go through in the white paper is a discussion about our, whether your organization is prepared for, for the migration. Tell me more about that. Yeah, and um, yeah, the, one of the main things there, obviously, is has your migration done this before? Has it done a migration before? Maybe you're going from 2013 to 2016, uh, uh, those versions of SharePoint. This time, but previously, you've done migration from SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint 2013. If, if that's the case, then you've got a lot of experience to draw upon, and you can kind of take what you did well before and, and use that. And those, those things that you didn't do so well, you can you can try and avoid the same mistakes. Um, maybe instead, however, you're going from SharePoint uh, 2013 to SharePoint Online, and you've probably never done that before um, because you don't usually migrate there twice, uh, although maybe different farms you could do that with. So there are some different challenges there. You just need to realize that and then kind of realize that, yes, we've got some experience with migrations, but there's some aspect that we don't know as well. Um, other aspects are, do you have skilled resources for the migrations? This could be anyone from uh, project managers, level two, uh, tier two support type things, uh, developers or people to help manage the migration, um, IT personnel, uh, communications, uh, those types of things are, are important to, uh, to have a successful migration. And we'll, we'll get into some of those a little bit more. Um, and then, um, you know, I think it's really important to understand, do you have the time to do a migration? Or, or do you have an, uh, a reasonable deadline as to when this has to happen? And uh, as we've seen before, especially with our Jive to SharePoint migrations, this can Sometimes our clients come in and want something done in two months, and that's just not um, a very reasonable timeline a lot of times. And, and for a very large and complex migration, we probably want it to be a year or more out that mm -hmm. you're going to you know, need this thing to be done. Um, and, then, and then finally, I would, I would say that um, you know, senior C-level type or senior executives, uh, you need someone on there that's an advocate for this project, the migration project. You need, um, you know, the CIO, CTO, someone like that that can say, uh, yeah, where we need to make this happen, here's why we need to make this happen, and work with that individual to give them a, an understanding of, of what's can, what the process is going to be like, what's the end user experience going to be like. Mm -hmm. um, because there's going to be moving people's cheese, and uh, it could potentially cause some people problems, and you don't, you know what, you want everyone to understand this, you want to communicate it well, we'll get into communications uh, certainly a bit. But you also want your, you know, some sponsor that can back you on this and that can understand up front that there's going to be challenges with the migration. And that sponsor is usually somebody within the IT department? It, it could be, yeah. Okay. It, it, I or, guess it doesn't have to be, but it yeah. typically is. Okay. And then we um, usually with these, we're sort of looking, looking at your own organization. And a lot of these, you know, for the large and complex migrations, um, really, there's a there's a number of people who are involved. It's both you know your organization, the sponsor, the things um, that uh, capabilities, and also the um, amount of time that you have toward that you can put towards the migration. But then you're also working with third party folks. Maybe um, uh, we're I know we'll talk later on about offshore resources mm -hmm. and outside consulting firms. But it's almost like you're putting together a larger team to go after this as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, support personnel, everything. So let's jump into number two. 
should you automate? Yeah, and, and, and the first part of this is, um, you know, clearly for anything but a super simple migrations, you're going to want to use a tool out there, and that's sort of a form of automation. And, and you're going to want to find one of the third-party tools to help you. And um, that's, that's important in and of itself. But then do you want to automate on top of that tool? And by that, I mean, if you, if you look at how a lot of these tools work, they, they um, let you go in with an interface and kind of say, okay, I want to move this folder from my source environment to my target environment or this library or this site or the site collection. And they help you, help you through that process, but a lot of times there's a lot of configuration options like, um, okay, I'm moving to site collection. How many ver version history, how many versions of your documents and list items do you want to maintain mm -hmm. as you're moving it over? You can configure that with a lot of these tools. Well, that's only one piece. There's, there's dozens of knobs to turn with these more advanced tools. And you're going to probably want some consistency. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, if you're moving a lot of site collections, you may want to, um, you may want to kind of automate the, the process of batching these up and moving them um, you know, over time. So maybe you're doing um, 50 to 100 site collections a day. And maybe you want to run them in off hours based on the time zone of that site collection. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe at the end of when it runs, you want to send some emails before it runs. Maybe you want to put a banner on the site to say, you know, it's being migrated. There are lots of things you can do around that if you do the automation. And then, of course, you can kind of watch it from a monitoring standpoint and understand, well, how many do we have active right now? Um, are we having problems anywhere? Do we have the capacity to do this? It, it really, a, a lot of this depends on kind of your method of migration. So SharePoint, is, as most people know, or many people know, um, you know, there's things like uh, site collection backup restore. There's uh, database attach migrations. And then if you're going to SharePoint online, you can't do either of those. So uh, that's that one you have to use basically a tool that's going to use CSOM or the Azure Upload API. and um, along with CSOM, and then, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces, and uh, you can't do, you know, a thousand site collections at once. So, so it needs to kind of be managed from a batching standpoint. And there are a lot of tools that are out there. I know we've even done evaluations for clients just to sort of see what was the best one for them, and I know through the years we've done all, just because of um, our clients' preferences, have done a lot of things with Metalogix where we end up building on top of their tools, sort of automating the tool, which has been kind of interesting to see. Yeah, and so, so some tools don't allow you to automate it, and I think some have gotten better over the years, but um, Metalogix is definitely one that you can automate it, so they've, they've got a, a relatively easy way to kind of say, okay, give me the PowerShell script for doing uh, copying this site collection over from one environment to another. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of take that, and then you can layer in doing that on any site collection. Um, and maybe you can you know, find out when it's done and then do some other tweaks if you need to. So if you're automating, you can, you can kind of overcome any deficiencies in the tool or just any custom things you want to do, um, like before a site collection is moved or, or after or you know, any part of the migration. And we've got some folks from Casal on the line as well. And um, how, have, what have we, how have we used their tools to sort of to inventory things? Yeah, so yeah, but that's, that's what... Um, to my knowledge, that's a lot of what they do is inventory. So yeah. they give a very detailed inventory of what you've got out there. SharePoint doesn't do a great job of telling you what's, you know, what's in SharePoint. And so if you want to know things like, well, how many uh, farm solutions do I have out there? Mm -hmm. How many sandbox solutions do I have? Maybe you're moving to SharePoint Online where you can't really do that anymore. Um, what about running workflows? You can't migrate running workflows um, to SharePoint Online, for example. Um, are there, are, how many are running? So what about uh, other things like uh, the length of the URL is too long? Is it, is it, you know, maybe reports on things like that. So lot, lots of things you can kind of inventory. Nice. This one I know within the um, ebook is a long one. <laughs> this is one of the longer ones. Okay. Since I helped format it a little bit, this was the longer one, which was break the process into stages. And uh, we, uh, we have lots of conversations around here about process and really uh, fun topics like that. But how does, what, what does this mean for a migration? And talk me through this. Sure. So we, you know, we came up with um, 
uh, you, obviously you have to kind of manage this somehow. So you want to break it up into, into parts that you can kind of think about and, and focus on. So okay. we broke it into four primary stages, uh, assess, plan, verify, and execute. So the assess stage is the first one, and that's, that's the one where we're going to try and understand what it is you want to get done. So uh, we want to know what your goals are. We want to understand what the scope is. Are you moving two farms, one farm? How big is the farm? A lot of site collections or not? What version of SharePoint are you on? We want uh, to understand what you know a resource plan, come up with a schedule. So just really get the lay of the land. Mm -hmm. um, initial communication plan, lots of things. Uh, the next next one after the, you, you do the assessment is the planning stage, and that's that is kind of the big one. So we even break this one down further <laughs> into four more steps. So in, inside of planning, we we break it down into inventory, map, streamline, and communicate. And inventory is what you talked about with the Casal tool. There's okay. uh, Microsoft's got a tool out there. Um, some of the uh, migration tool vendors have a tool as well. Uh, we even have one, uh, our ledger tool. Everybody's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be a cool kid on the block. So there's, um, so you need to, and the inventory is understand what you've got and what you want to move. So um, you, you want to take stock in, in what's out there, how big is, is each maybe site collection. If you're moving site collections, um, you want to understand what it is that, that, you know, is it business critical? Is it not? Um, what about your uh, OneDrive or user base data? Those types of things. Um, after inventory, you want to map it. So, you know, it could be a simple mapping exercise where you just say, well, it's from, uh, we're moving things from point A to point B. It's a lift and shift. We're keeping the same URLs except for maybe the beginning part, or, or maybe we are keeping the beginning part the same. So, same managed path, if you will, same, same uh, URLs for the site collection. Or are you going to do some reorganization along the way? Okay. So you could, um, you know, move a lot of site collections into the same site collection, or vice versa, as a simple example. Um, so that's that's the mapping exercise. Um, the streamline exercise is really after you start to understand this stuff, you you want to you want to decide. Um, you know, are there ways that we can automate this or make this better? So yeah. this would be might be the time that you might you know kind of define well uh, proof of concepts that maybe need to get done in terms of you know let's let's test out the tool in this way or how are we going to manage our batching of all this you know, moving all this content over um, and then finally after streamline in in the in the planning uh, sub phase if you will is communicate and, and this one comes up multiple times in, in this uh, white paper or ebook, and uh, and this is just one of those times that you, you've got to communicate to others what the plan is, um, what the custom requirements requirements might be. So you've got, um, you know, might, you might have farm solutions, you might have to deal with those, and uh, and then, you know, once you're done with the this planning phase, you can kind of upgrade your, update your migration charter, your Basically, your um, your scope as to what you're going to do and mm -hmm. the way you communicate to the, the team members as to what we're doing. Big breath, and then so after after that phase, we've got the verify phase, and that um, that's where we're going to kind of really dig in and say, all right, let's make sure we can actually do this. Let's take a subset of things. This is where you might do proof concepts on the tool, do some tests on it. Uh, make sure that it's hitting the, their, your primary business use cases okay. that you have out there that you that you know of, maybe from your inventory. Um, you'll you you got to do pilots. So after you've kind of gone through some of those, maybe maybe you're going to um, uh, automate in some way. You'll want to go ahead and set that automation up, code for it, prepare for it. But then at some point you can do pilots, and we'll get into pilots some more. But that's that would be part of this verify stage. And then finally, after that is you know doing the real work, the execute stage. So um, ideally, in the verify stage, you've done a pilot of, of enough of your process so that there's not many surprises, but there's bound to be surprises mm -hmm. when you're executing. So, um, but the execute is where you can do things over and over and over again if it's a large migration. 
And a lot of these really doesn't matter what you call them. You just can't skip some of these. Right. Pages, that's right. right. Call, word, it, call it your process. Mm -hmm. Call it whatever you may. It may. It's. I think this is all sort of designed around reducing risk, um, looking at sort of what you know. How do we pull off a successful migration? Well, these are the things that we've noticed have to happen in order for for us to reduce the most amount of risk in order right. to to occur successfully. Yes. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. Number four, I should have a, a drum roll, please. <laughs> communication is crap. We, we always talk about communication. Yeah. Things like that's that's the uh, that's the central theme with you, right? It, you, I guess you can you can migrate to the best of your ability, but if you don't, if you mess up the communication, it's not a successful project. Right. I mean, we've seen um, before where you know we we need to communicate. Not only there's lots of people to talk to, right? So, but if you don't communicate to your end users and your site owners. You're going to have some problems. They're going to start seeing things are happening underneath them, and they're going to be complaining. And yeah. some of those people are going to know the CEO, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so you just you, you need to communicate early and 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 well. And so we've got lots of ways to do that. Um, we we got a few different documents that we think are useful um, through this process. So one is a policy document, and this will define kind of what your policies are with the migration. So as an example, if you're moving to SharePoint Online, you'll probably have a policy that says we are not going to move migrating workflows, um, SharePoint workflows. That's because you can't do that with SharePoint Online. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be a good policy to have. But people need to understand that. What does that mean? You know, How do they prepare for that? So um, you know, they'll probably want a um, run book or a checklist for them to go through before the migration so they're prepared for that. Uh, there could be other policies of things you support and don't support um, as part of the migration, but it's important to understand what that is, and that takes time to understand that. So I talked before about time to, to come up with this policy document and then communicate it out. It takes some time, and, and it's I think it's an important piece of the migration. Another one is the run book that I just mentioned. So this would be maybe a checklist that um, site owners have to go through before their site um, is migrated. Or it could even be users, but typically be site owners that they do before and after a migration of a site. And, and this may need a lot of lead time. So, for example, if you're going to SharePoint Online and you've got farm solutions, well, those farm solutions aren't going to go over. So, how are you going to deal with that? Are you, as the IT organization that's running the migration, are you going to go ahead and, as a service, re-architect those um, farm solutions for them? Um, if there's a lot of them, probably not. You're going to make the business own that. So each business unit that has farm solutions, now they've got to come up with a way to get that over on their own. So um, you've got to work through that process. And the run book might, um, might kind of have that as one of the checklist items. Okay. Um, a couple of the documents we have that we, we discuss as a self-help document, which is for users. So um, maybe you've noticed, you notice through your... Uh, testing phases and pilot phases that there are certain places where users can get confused. You know, you're moving, you're moving from one environment to another. If it's, uh, you know, from one version of SharePoint to another, things look differently in SharePoint. So, you know, the site actions menu is on the different side from 2010 and 2013. Or um, in SharePoint Online, you've got the new modern views um, and modern UI that looks a lot different. So maybe your self-help might. Um, you know, help users kind of um, find that stuff and make it a little bit less um, jarring as they as they go from one environment to another. And then finally, another document that we talk about is a knowledge base, and this would be more for your your level one or level two support to um, to work through if there are migration issues. An example of this might be um, when you're migrating master pages and they don't migrate well for one reason or another. Um, there might be some ways that some technical individuals can kind of help out, and they might want to have some guidance through a document. But that's only that's only part of the communication. So there's there's more to it than that. And 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 we in in the in the um, white paper we show a timeline of how some of this might work. But but when you are doing the, the migration of people's content, you know you might want to email out the site owners or or people that use the site and say, hey, you're going to be migrated in two weeks, and uh, here's the schedule. 
Um, or you might want to send out some communications earlier than that and, and let the site owners you know, sign up as to when they're going to be migrated or give them some leeway from a timing standpoint. A lot of times there's um, some, some aspects of, of your business that uh, have critical periods within the year. Maybe it's around um, a holiday or something like that. If, and, and so you just have to give them some leeway so that you're not migrating them at the most important time of their year. Maybe it's tax season or something like that. Um, but you can communicate via email. You can communicate via banners on the site. Okay. Um, just lots of different ways. Nice. And you can automate some of that, obviously, if you want to. All right. Well, we've talked about Pilot already. <laughs> you don't usually say always. You're, you're, typically, um, you'll say it depends. Well, it depends if you're doing a large and complex migration. If you're doing a large, well, I think we went into this, <laughs> and it is a large and complex migration, so, so you do. So, so the answer is you do one, okay. and um, and yeah, there's and in fact, you might want to do two. So, um, so the pilot uh, is critical. I think what what's important about a pilot, and what are important for me to communicate right now, is a pilot is not necessarily just testing. Um, does the tool that we're using work the way we want it to for um, you know these 20 site collections, let's say. That's good. You want to test that out. You want to, you want to kind of pick um, a decent number of uh, pilot um, site collections that, that you can use to move over and migrate and see how it goes. But you don't want to just test the mechanics of the tool. You want to test the mechanics of your process. Do you have a support process that's ready to handle this? You know, can tier one support? Do you have a ticketing process that's, that's ready to handle this? Um, can you handle issue remediation? So what what do you do when an issue comes up? What, how is it handled? Um, how is the communications working during, how is it going to work during production? Well, if you can test it during pilot, you're going to run through some of those yeah. um, things and you're going to find out what, what's working well, not working well, and, and work through the kinks in the process instead, you know, once, once you start your full-on migration, a lot of times people want to go fast, 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 and if, if that's the case, you're going to have a hard time catching up if you're always trying to deal with these issues that were not tested during pilot. Who do you, um, what groups typically do the pilot? Is there anything, any guidance there with who does the pilot? Um, a lot of times you'll see IT wanting to to kind of pick themselves as a guinea pig, which is fine, but you you really need to work through you know, representative yeah. um, piece parts of your company. So it needs to be more than just IT. Um, so you just have to branch out to different departments. And, and of course, you want you want to choose people that maybe as site owners that um, that can work with you through some of these issues. So, for example, during the pilot process, you may you may find out that oh that didn't go well at all. We're going to just trash what we just did, and we're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. You, ideally, you want to work with individuals that will allow for that. Um, now, when you're done, you really want it to be in production. So that, that it's, I think that's the ideal scenario. But you, you have to allow for you know, a redo or a mulligan of some sort in some of these cases. So, um, or at least where it's going to limp along and you're like, okay, well, you know, we got these five libraries moved over, but we really had a problem with this one because of you know, the way the custom content types are set up or something like that. And, um, so we need, you know, we need some time to work through that. Go ahead and work with, you know, go please work on the old site for this library and the new site for this one or something like that. You may decide mm -hmm. that's how you want to want to go. And, and having, you know, pilot users and pilot site owners that um, can work with you is is, yeah. is important. Yeah. Number six. Have a plan for tree. There's gonna be issues. <laughs> I guess we're talking about large and complex. Yeah, there, there's gonna. I mean, when you're if if you're doing certain things like a um, a database attach, a lot of times that can go pretty simply. But yeah. if you're if you're doing a lot of um, you know, one-off movements or moving things with CSOM over to SharePoint Online, then um, these tools are not perfect, and there are certain things that, that it can't do just right. And um, they can report errors, and you can try and look at those errors and work those. And of course, users can report errors as well. 
So from a triage standpoint, you want to be able to take in mm -hmm. those different um, pieces of information, and you you want to um, you want to have a plan for how you're going to address them. And, and what we've done in the in the past is we've looked at uh, something we call issue definitions, which is just a way of defining a type of issue that we think can occur. Maybe we found that out during pilots or even some of our testing. It's mm -hmm. something that we know, um, you know, the tool doesn't handle perfectly, or yep. because of our process, something just can't happen perfectly. Yep. Um, maybe we, some of those we're able to um, automate and code around, but some of them we can't. And so, um, we, if you can define some of those issues up front, and then um, and what we've done is, is we'll actually uh, automate the process of taking errors from the migration tool, plug them into these issue definitions, and then we kind of um, jumpstart the triage process so we know, okay, this is now, this needs to go to, straight to level two support um, or level three support where we're going to start managing the, um, uh, the triage process and, and the remediation of the issues. And the, uh, there's a feedback loop where these issue definitions can, you know, you can de determine them a little bit most, mostly in, in pilots and even throughout production. Um, and then that feedback loop is, well, maybe that goes back to update um, our knowledge base or our self-help or our policies. Maybe our policy manual is, that we talked about earlier needs to, needs to say, you know what, we cannot handle this and we need to communicate that out. Um, so just realize that there's a, a big feedback loop there. Yeah, and I'm just pulling up as you're talking here. Just um, sorry, I'm just pulling up the the ebook, and I noticed they had some nice diagrams. Just sort of talking through this a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that that kind of shows a little bit of that feedback loop where where the, those issues um, you know go into an issue definition, and then depending on what happens, then you you're going to have some feedback to the site owners. Maybe you'll do an update to um, self help or knowledge base. Nice. So, support process. Yeah, so this bleeds, uh, or this, this, nerd, this is part of the triage, right? You've okay. got, um, you're going to have, I think I already mentioned some of this, you're going to have inputs from multiple um, sources. So you're going to have users are going to be calling in with issues, uh, site owners are going to be calling in with issues, uh, and then the actual people running the migration um, or the tool itself that's, used, that's doing the migration, it's going to find issues and all of that needs to come into your process and you need to have um, a clear way of, of a clear defined path of how you're going to handle those issues. Okay. And so this just gets back to when I talked about the pilot needing to test not only the tool itself, but needing to test the overall process. If you can include your support process as part of the pilot, you're going to be so much better, uh, more well prepared to do the migration. Because um, just imagine on day one of, of a migration, if you're doing, you know, uh, say you're doing 100 site collections and, or 1,000 site collections or whatever it is, probably closer to 100. And, um, these issues are flooding in. You need to have this embedded process where you can kind of deal with that because there's going to be new things coming up that you weren't prepared for, and um, you want to be prepared as you can. And I think uh, uh, as well with this one, I thought you had some. Um, there's a sample diagram in the there that diagram. shows. Uh, it's actually it says it's a simplified diagram because even though there's like 20 or so blocks, it, it could be a lot bigger in terms of. You know, what the process might look like on how you escalate to um, different levels of support, uh, where the issue originated, and you know what documentation gets updated in the end, if any. Okay. Nice. At least that's a starting point or yeah. an example of one for you. Yeah, that, that came out of one of our uh, migrations that we simplified it to, you know, genericize it basically. But um, so it's it, it it will be more complex than that, but it'll it, that might be similar to what you want. Number eight, yeah, archive strategy. Right. So um, you know a lot of 
a lot of times you'll hear it, it's easy to just go out there and say, you know what, our goal is to move things from SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint 2013. And let's just move it, you know. Um, and that's fine, especially if it's on-prem. Maybe that's more fine, but if you're going to SharePoint Online, it's, it's a little bit harder. And, um, and why move things that just you don't need? So yeah. there's always things that, that can go away. And I know that as part of governance, um, a lot of corporations will try to do things where, um, you know, uh, certain sites have policies where that data gets deleted over time. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen that used well, well in, in, in the field, but, but it, it's great if you can do that. But there's still bound to be um, site collections that you just don't need anymore, mm -hmm. um, or at least you don't think you need. And there's, um, you know, we talked about the Casal tool. It's going to tell you when the last time, and I think the Microsoft one might do this as well, when the last time a site collection was touched. Okay. You know, if, it's, if it hasn't been touched in two years or three years, well, there's a good chance either you don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. And by touch, maybe that means something was modified. Well, well maybe people are reading the site, and, and so maybe they do need it. So, but, but you want to understand what, what you want to keep and what you don't. And so in, in the um, e-book, I mentioned what is your criteria for archive or not. Maybe it's had, there's no changes in the last two years or last six months or whatever it is. And um, or maybe it's based on size. If it's really small, maybe someone created a team site and never really did anything with it, mm -hmm. or created a blog site and they created one or two blogs. You know, is it really that important to keep that? Um, and so understand what that criteria is, and then come up with a process for archiving. And you also want to test your process for restoring. So maybe your archive process involves um, site collection backups. Uh, you know, you got to come up with a way of doing that. Tools have um, ways of archiving as well. Mm -hmm. And then you'll want to test your restore process so that you um, feel comfortable and that your, that your team um, that's going to manage this going forward, they've got to be the ones that know how to do the restore. If someone says, oh gosh, we really did need, you know, X document and that was over in this site and we don't have that anymore. And then someone can do that restore for them and get the document out. I think up to this point we've talked a lot about um, uh, SharePoint to SharePoint migrations. I think a lot of these. Funny when you were talking earlier about sort of like the inventory of what's out there. Um, you know, one of the, the types of migrations we've been doing a lot of is the Jive to SharePoint migrations. Mm -hmm. And that made me think, you know, the, the trial version of the migrator tool does an inventory for you, sort of tells mm -hmm. you what's out there. So that sort of fits into, I think, the process that we use. Oh, yeah. And then you have sort of the shallow pull, uh, pull and the deep pull, which sort of tell you a little bit more, give you some more information about what's in the environment. But all these things pretty much, it applies to, doesn't really matter that where it's not exclusive to moving from SharePoint. I don't to think it has to be. SharePoint yeah. Online. And this, yeah, the pro the, you know, there it's a process, and, yeah. and it doesn't have to be that specific to okay. your technology. Okay. Well, one one other thing when it comes to archive, or one other thing to think about is a lot of clients, you know, they'll they'll say, you know what, we want to move to SharePoint Online, and um, so let's migrate our SharePoint 2013 environment there. But you know what, we've got some critical farm solutions that um, are in you know these certain sites. And we just don't want to undergo the effort to re, um, re-architect those solutions to get them to work in SharePoint Online. And that may, that's a good decision for you. So that decision may be that you keep them in your current SharePoint, maybe 2013 environment, and, um, and then the other sites go to SharePoint Online. And I, I could call that a hybrid option, where yeah. you just keep, you keep some of your, um, uh, your existing farm um, working, and you move most of it to the new environment, and and then you let that hit end of life. Yeah, hit the end of and, life, and then and then you can get rid of it that time. Yeah, just wait for the next time in which you really need to do a refresh of that line of business app, and then that's right. the time in which you decommission it and move it over exactly. to SharePoint. That's right. That sounds sensible. <laughs> <laughs> so. Last one. We're here. We made it. We even did. even though we even we weird ourselves. <laughs> um, 
I, I wanted you to change this to consider three wheel resources, but you, you wanted to have consider offshore resources. What is that? Why why is that such a uh, uh, an important thing for you to to point out yeah. at this point? Well, if it's if it's a big migration, you've got a lot of moving parts and a lot of data that's uh -huh. going across, and so. Um, some things are going to be happening over and over and over again. Okay. And while you can automate a lot of it, there's going to be a human factor for a lot of it as well. So um, we have used offshore in the past, and, and you can use offshore to help out with various aspects. So one might be um, as you're starting your project and you're determining that, hey, we, we can automate some of this, they could help you maybe with some of that tooling. Um, another would be certainly like the level two support. So maybe you've got a help desk staff, but when it comes to SharePoint expertise, you only have a handful of people mm -hmm. and they are not going to be able to, to take all those level two calls that are coming in. So, so an, off, uh, an offshore staff might be able to do that. You can get some SharePoint resources, obviously, that know um, some of these finer uh, things within SharePoint, such as, as I mentioned, like master page tweaks that might have to occur, for okay. example. Um, so that's that's where they, they can come in and fill those gaps. Awesome. Um, they, they could also help with the triage process. So when, as issues are maybe being reported, not only by users, but by the tool itself, they can triage those issues and say, you know what, oh, this isn't an issue, or, oh, yeah, this is something big. Let's dive in further and see if we can fix this. You did it? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll mention one other thing around okay. it. Well, well around, around the offshore is, um, you know, you, you want to, and I, I'm not saying you should use them, I'm saying you should consider using yeah. them. <clears throat> but, um, and, and, you know, we've had success with them in the past for sure, but the, uh, you know, you want to consider the time zone differences, and that can be a pro and a con. And so, for example, obviously time zone differences can be rough. Say it's um, they're in India and that's you know tenish hours different from Eastern time in the U.S. But it's kind of hard to kind of talk to them much during the day. Mm -hmm. So um, that can be a problem. But the the other uh, side of that coin is that if you're running these migrations, they can be doing things off hours, you know, while you're not doing them. So they can kind of be you can be more of a 24-hour team when you have. Your, your team spread across the globe to an extent. And, and of course, maybe you're a global company and you've already got resources all over the place, but if you, if you don't, then this might be a, a nice way to kind of help your IT organization manage the process. Awesome. Awesome. So we are about at 10 minutes left here. If folks have any questions that they want to ask um, in the, the GoToWebinar interface, uh, feel free to do that and we'll look through those. Um, I'll give you guys a second to do that if there are any questions. Again, the, if you go into the handout section of, of uh, GoToWebinar, there is, you can download the PDF for this, and so feel free to download that and uh, share it with your colleagues. Um, we'll also, I, I, I think I mentioned this the first time and not the second, that we will be sending out a um, recorded version of this, so you can share that as well. We'll, uh, Three Will has a podcast, and actually this will go up as well as a, as a podcast, we'll have to just clip out the first part of it and <laughs> up there. Or have a very long intro music. Yeah, right? yeah. Intro good. music for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. some nice elevator music for 10 minutes, yeah. and, and then we'll jump into it. Um, I don't think I see anybody. Maybe we muted the question. We've got muted questions. I hope not. I hope I have muted questions. Well, let's do this. Um, I guess if you had to have a, a conclusion to all of this, what sort of putting this together, and um, what would be sort of like a you know um, didn't have time to listen to the whole podcast, uh, yeah, whole podcast, whole webinar. What would you say is a, a key thing to take away from this as far as? Uh, preparing for a, a large and complex SharePoint migration. Well, yeah, well, um, be prepared is what I was about to say. But yeah. uh, so, I mean, if if you can take take a look at this um, paper and 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 breeze through some of the sections and see, you know, what kind of rings true for you and and uh, plan ahead. You know, yeah. um, we've said it several times, but it's kind of probably the top three might be sort of, you know 
plan ahead, um, do a pilot, mm -hmm. and communicate. You know, there's there's others in there. I think they're all important, um, but but those are those are ones that I think are really important, and uh, and not necessarily in that order. But uh, you, you want to give yourself the time to make it happen. You you want to vet the process out and and the tool out and and the whole the whole thing, and then um, you need to communicate with um, not only um, side owners but also end users mm -hmm. and upper management and make sure that everyone's on board with what's going on and, and there's several ways to do that communication and several times you need to be doing that communication. And purely selfish question here, but people pull us into these types of engagements. Why? Is it just because we've done them before and can keep them out of the things that get them into trouble with the migration or what yeah, I mean, they're really, it's not part of people's business to be doing migrations. Um, so so they don't you know they don't really need to have that expertise for something they're not doing that often mm -hmm. and that's so they it's smart if it's big enough to try and get help mm -hmm. and uh, and so you're you're, going, you're not going to run into all the issues we run into before if you have our help there will be issues I can guarantee that if it's if it's large and complex enough there's going to be issues that we're going to have to work through um, and every because every migration is different but um, but there's a lot of similarities too. So once everybody is on SharePoint online, what happens to our no migration more migrations. practice? No more migrations. Then you just see new stuff when you're not ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> then we move over to our portals practice and That's then right. to app dev. You can we switch over to that. That's, That's right. That will be a. I'm not sure that date's going to come anytime soon as far as everybody moving over to SharePoint online. Yeah, right? and that is one interesting thing is is you know this doesn't have to apply just to SharePoint online, but I think a lot of this is is when you're moving to SharePoint online it becomes more complex. Yeah. Um, because the the tooling has to do more work. Um, but but once you move to SharePoint online, you know the promise is uh, you shouldn't have to migrate again. Um, you know, there's not another version of, of SharePoint to migrate to. Microsoft is handling all that for you underneath the covers. Uh -huh. um, but at the same time, then there's going to be, I suppose, there will be features that come and go and and uh, be deprecated over time. I, I would guess. I haven't seen that happen yet in SharePoint line, online. I can't think of one. But um, but there will be, you know, the next InfoPath Power Apps or something. You know, maybe that will go away. I'm not saying it's going to, but. Hopefully it, it it you know automatically migrates into its next thing for you, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but there will be some aspect I'm sure, but it should be a lot less from a migration standpoint once you're in SharePoint. Well, thank you for taking the time to put this ebook together sure. and getting your thoughts down on paper. I know it's tough. I mean, you've been really busy lately and doing a great job on projects. And, um, just appreciate all the hard work that you've been doing uh, with migration. It's sure. awesome. It's amazing to see how quickly all this stuff is coming together. Thanks. Well, there are several people that helped out. Um, you know, I know at the, uh, on the title page or something it mentions reviewers, contributors, or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and so several people helped out, and, and I appreciate their help. So. Absolutely. I don't see any questions. If not, I, I put, went ahead and put up. Uh, You've got my email address up there, my phone number. Uh, feel free to drop me a line if you want to um, pick up on this subject and maybe go into something a little bit deeper that we didn't cover with this. I can grab Kirk and we can set up a phone call. Um, and if there's any other questions that you have, again, thank you. Apologies about the first 10 minutes. I apologize about that. Um, but thank you for hanging on and for listening. And uh, we'll send in a couple days here. You'll see an email from us that has a link to, uh, to how to share this with others. So. Keep an eye out for that. Thanks again, Kirk, for, for your help with this. You're welcome. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a great day and have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.